so you've made some prints you've made some prints using a rectangular base plate perhaps you made some print using lovely 300 gsm watercolor paper but what if you want to make some prints but you want, don't want to be restricted by a rectangular plate or you don't want to be restricted by white background well this video is for you i'm going to show you how you can start off with more exciting background and different things than just a rectangular plate so first of all we're going to learn how to make a different background paper ready for your print you can use different techniques i'm going to show you one of them i'm going to show you how i use a secret ingredient to create this exciting pink background um we're also going to learn how to use rubbish rubbish from packaging um this is not just a video about making tetra pack printmaking um this is a video to show you how you don't have to be restricted by a rectangular cardboard board so over a period of time i have collected uh some uh, basically some packaging and it could be any packaging really and how i decided that i'm going to keep it it really depends if um there's something interesting about it so some packaging has a mixture of shiny and matte areas and that excites me because that's going to print differently so that i kept this and also because some packaging has well interesting shapes i guess this is um packaging from a uh, soap uh some packaging is all shiny so we can rip pieces and make some matte tones some darker tones this one is exciting uh because it has it's partly shiny partly matte um and uh this can show in your prints so for example here uh i think i'm hoping you can see actually some writing came up uh from the packaging so obviously writing was made in a shiny sort of print uh, and that's quite cool um and yeah so um in this example i think there was a bit which was sort of more shiny uh, a bit like here and that will show up and obviously all these exciting creases uh it's just an additional bonus so i do keep lots of packaging i add to packaging i rip things off i glue things on i put some pasting gels on and this is what we're going to do so um this is another part of printmaking that i find really interesting because um you can come up with unexpected results so i had uh, some idea of what i wanted to do uh, this actually has been um made it has been done for a, for a competition by pressing matters magazine pink and black uh, so i've entered this competition and i wanted to film the process i wanted to do something exciting and, and different so i'm going to start with preparing the paper so these three pieces of paper are just my watercolor gsm 300 gsm uh bits of paper uh, and i have pre-soaked them so i just sprayed water all over them you can also soak them completely if you if you wish and this is just an acrylic ink so magenta color acrylic ink which i've just splattered all over the wet paper um I could leave it like this, I guess. Uh, it depends what you want to do, but I have decided to sort of smudge it all over. Um, it would be actually quite interesting to perhaps try it out with not smudging it all over. Here, so this is my secret ingredient. It's bleach. It's just domestic bleach. Um, I would suggest do it with an open window so you've got some air going through the room. And um, what bleach does, well, it bleaches the ink. So I've just added a bit of bleach with a pipette and I'm just adding a little bit more ink. So I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping in some variety of tone, um, something exciting happening, something unexpected, I guess. Um, 
just added a bit more bleach there so as you can see i'm sort of get, getting rid of excess ink i guess and um i'm getting some lovely kind of tones uh i guess of the of the magenta of the pink um and i'm just getting adding a bit of texture with tissue paper with kitchen towel um just dabbing it on and again sort of getting rid of the excess by tilting the paper um, so um, I've also just pressed another bit of paper on that top right one um, just created a bit of texture on the edge um, so yeah just wanted to get some different tones different textures this is a bit of cling film as well um, just to get some more texture again and just dabbing on so you can go as far as you want with this or as little as you want you, you might not want to use some texture and i've just um used hair dryer as well at the end so here are my bits of recycling packaging uh, it's all quite dark so i am utilizing shapes uh, i kind of unpacked the tetra pack packaging and i'm sort of using uh, the shape the exciting shapes I've, i'm cutting them up i'm sort of lining them up a little bit against the white background to start thinking about some ideas um, that I might, you know, utilize for for my print. Um, so now that I'm happy with my cutout shapes, I'm gonna use my scalpel knife and start um, peeling off bits of card just to get some different patterns on my on the on the card. It's quite easy to peel off. The card is quite thin, so I don't expect it to last very much. Maybe a couple of prints and it might end up in a bin. But I'm not really fussed about it. I'm just excited about the possibilities. And the beauty of thin card is that um, it won't use, it won't create um, too much of the edge as well. It, it will be quite nice and flat sort of um, shape. Um, so I've got some ideas of patterns here and I'm just cutting out some more shapes here. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, I'm also, as well as packaging, I'm going to use a bit of wallpaper. I've just got bits of wallpaper and wonderful thing about this wallpaper is that it, it already comes up with some patterns, some interesting uh, sort of textures. Um, so. I'm going to just cut a few bits out and um, just to complement my composition. Um, so once I've done all my shapes, I'm using um, heavy body acrylic medium. It's matte and I'm just putting it on top and I've scraped some shapes with... Um, dry point tool and i'm also using um the same acrylic matte heavy body to create some stenciling on top of my shapes too you can use palette knife i quite like using color shaper uh it's sometimes can splodge through so i guess don't overdo it um just a couple of strokes and yeah that one has come out all right so it's matte on matte so i don't expect a huge variety a huge contrast in my print um but if you did it on gloss it would probably come out uh more varied you, it, so it's going to be a very very subtle pattern uh, because it's matte on matte um so yeah, I've just got various um, shop-bought stencils. I have also my own stencils. As you can see, just above above my left hand, there is a stencil that I've made out of sort of organic shapes. I took a photograph from rocks. Um, so um, I'm just really playing around uh, here, just, you know, making my shapes a bit more interesting i'm gonna apply some of this matte uh, media acrylic matte media on top of the uh, wallpaper shapes just to make them a little bit more 
durable uh, because it's just pure paper. It's thin. Um, it's not really coated with, oh, perhaps it is coated with something, but I'm just making it, I don't want it to last a little bit longer. So I'm just putting some matte medium on it. I'm planning to just roll ink on top so you should print just like that with the pattern that it's already on the wallpaper. Uh, here I'm just going to add a, more of this matte medium and some glitter. Uh, glitter is lovely, it can create really beautiful texture. So I'm just sort of embedding this glitter into the matte medium. Um, and here I'm using um, I'm using a gel, a, a paste, a sort of acrylic paste, uh, which is again matte. Uh, so it's a golden paste, um, and it's sort of, sort of semi stiff. It's not too, you know, so you can use it for stenciling. Um, and that was my own stencil I made. Again, here I'm just uh, using a cold tar gel uh, uh, and sort of applying it with a squeegee bottle and just adding a bit of gloss medium here just to make it because it's matte I'm, I wanted to add a different glossy sort of tone and again here just adding a bit more gloss medium um, just for, for some contrast so here I'm going to use my own stencil again. Uh, that didn't quite work out, so I decided to get rid of it. Uh, sometimes it splodges through, but it doesn't matter. You can just clean it off. Uh, again, another stencil here with um, semi-gloss <coughs> acrylic medium. Uh, and a different stencil here. That was my own stencil. This is my own stencil too with semi-gloss medium. Uh, again, so I'm um, just really playing around here. Um, this is I literally sort of just uh, pressed against a bit of medium, and that created a, a nice, interesting pattern. So I've got all my bits here, and I'm going to ink them up black. Um, I'm inking up the wallpaper bits just by rolling the ink on. Uh, so it's like essentially a monoprint really, it's not a colograph type of print, or intaglio type of print, it's more like a relief print on these bits of wallpaper just to show the lovely patterns. But here on those colograph bits I'm applying the ink with just with roller and then I'm sort of rubbing it in with scrim, pushing the residue, pushing the ink into all the bits that haven't been reached by the roller. Um, and then, as always, polishing the plate, because polishing the plate always gives nice crisp texture afterwards. So I'm going to do that with all of uh, the shapes. <clears throat> they will all be black and I'm going to put them, as, as the theme is black and pink and black, uh, uh, the, these are the colours I'm so restricted to. But you can see I'm just putting it up closer to the camera. I've sped it up a bit because obviously this will get incredibly boring. It's just the same repetitive process for all of the um, bits really. Um, and again, again, it's sort of, it, it took quite a long time to get all the um, bits inked up, scrimmed up and polished with Newsprint. Um, so yeah, uh, I am able to, just showing you, I am able to soak my paper even though it has been pre-treated with acrylic ink. Um, here I'm going to place some newsprint bits and this is really just to add another layer um, to my final work, artwork. It's um, just adding strips I've cut out of newsprint, just blocking out, just ma masking out um, because I want to show some areas of pink uh, go, uh, through through um, the, 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 the colograph pieces that will go on top. Um, 
and that actually worked out quite nicely. I liked the effect. I was uh, I was glad I, I did that. Um, so you could do um, all sorts of things. You could do shapes. You could do uh, collage paper. You could do shilling clay. <coughs> um, it's a um, really nice way of varying uh, the print and just having an extra sort of layer there. Um, but without having to print again, I guess. And what I like about this as well is that those I keep those strips because they have a imprint of color graph on top of them, and I sometimes use them as collage papers in other work. So they can be really lovely uh, bits as well. Um, I don't throw anything away, um, so I'll, I've kept those, and I will probably use them someday. So <clears throat> I'm just very gently placing um, my inked up colographs and to be fair um, I'm not really, there's no plan as such, I just like the shapes and I'm, go I'm, I'm sort of um, going with the flow, kind of putting them in a I really like this these shapes that just came out of the, the packaging. They are so interesting. Um, so um, quite excited to see how that will work out. Um, but they seem to sort of go together really nicely. I think I have put that one I've just placed a wrong way round. And you'll find out soon when I reveal the print. I put it the ink side up instead of down. Um, it happens and it's not very helpful that the paper's black <laughs> so that uh, I think was part of the reason why I got it wrong way around but um, I rectified that by printing on top of it so uh, not the end of the world um, yeah so uh, I mean I guess if I wasn't restricted by the project to black and pink I would have probably done different colours um, but uh, yeah it's quite nice to work to a spec I guess because it forces you to do um, different things um, so I've got <clears throat> all my bits there and I'm just placing new sprint on top so I don't get my blankets dirty and this is just a bit of cardboard just to protect my blanket in case the new sprint gets wet I've got two blankets just adjusting my press and I'm going to um, make it as tight as possible. I do sometimes make it too tight and then I have to um, go back and readjust. Um, but I do make it super tight so sometimes it's actually quite difficult to turn. As you can see I'm struggling there. Um, I quite like the embossing and um, the effect you get from from getting your press quite tight cool so ha huh, obviously my favorite moment i love this bit i have lost my tweezers i normally use tweezers to reveal color graphs um especially when they smile so yeah because you can see that was put placed the wrong way around so it hasn't printed at all uh it actually printed on the newsprint on top of it anyway um so um, these are quite light because they were, uh, uh, I think they were quite glossy, those bits. This one is beautiful. I really like this one. Um, that was just uh, shapes carved in with a scalpel knife. Yeah, that was a gel or paste, or acrylic um, paste I used with my um, stencil. Cool. So as you can see, I, re I really like those masks, uh, those newsprint masks. I think they worked out really nicely. So it's not finished. I'm going to do a bit more to it. Obviously, I need to rectify the not printed bit of color graph that hasn't come out so um here's a close-up um 
you can see a bit better I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see all the bits that I've worked on um, I'm just going to add a, another uh, bit of texture so I'm just mixing up um, Madder Lake with uh, Titanium white, white and some Extender I'm using Intaglio Printmakers ink here because uh, I have um, treated paper with acrylic so it won't be as absorbent. I normally use um, Aqua inks but they need to be absorbed by the paper more so Intaglio Printmakers ink, inks here are, are better to use in this case. So I'm going to add this extra texture by just applying... Um, some ink using cling film. So I'm just sort of scrunching up a bit of cling film and putting it on top of uh, the rolled out ink and then I'm going to place it on top of my print on the press. All right so as you can see I've just put it on a, um, I put the print back on a press and, and I put the inked up cling film on top. Um, I need to protect this obviously with some newsprint on top as it would really badly stain my blankets. So just going to put two pieces of newsprint for good measure and a bit of cardboard just for extra protection and give it a whirl on my press and let's have a look. You can already see it, um, but it's obviously even more exciting when you peel it off. Oh, so cool. I really love using cling film. It's really good fun. Awesome. Cool. Right. So what do I do with this now? I need to decide. Have I got enough? Do I need more? Um... It's looking pretty cool, but I think hmm, I think I could do with some more different pattern. Um, maybe a bit of um, wallpaper. Um, yeah, let's put some more wallpaper on. So, in that, especially that bit that didn't print out, I going I'm going to cover it with some inked up wallpaper. Um, I'm just going to do it horizontally uh, just to sort of contrast with the vertical holograph prints. And, <clears throat> mm, yeah, very cool. Quite like what's happening here. So it's quite different from 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 the rest which is giving me a nice contrast which is what I was looking for and here is the result uh, I have also done another print that are going to maybe work a little bit more on um, so I've got three papers so I might do three different prints um, I will uh, post some results um, and little shorts on the channel later. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video um, it, and if you have anything you would like to suggest uh, or comment on, get in touch. Um, love seeing all your comments um, and little ideas about how you do stuff. Uh, it's really really great. So anyway, um, Thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon.